Hey everyone, welcome back to my tutorials. So for today's tutorial, uh, what we're going to look at is a couple interesting GLSL tricks. Uh, those GLSL tricks are going to be used by me in a lot of places, um, and I use them all the time. So I wanted to just make a special lesson to talk about these two super handy tricks. Uh, the first one you've probably seen me use before, and that is simply using a GLSL top to normalize some vectors. So there's a couple different uses for this, but mainly mine comes something, comes into play, uh, something like this. So if I take a picture, any picture, and I want to displace that, let's say by blue and green and my source midpoint is zero and my displace weight of zero. Even if I just have this displace weight of 0.01, we can already see that there's like a ton of stuff going on. Um, it's pretty cool. We can make this look a little bit cooler by making the image the source for the velocity. Um, but there's way too much going on. And when I have the displace weight of, you know, 0 0.01, I don't really want it to be this big. The reason that it's so big is that our top, which is often uh, the case in simulations, and I'm just going to drop an analyze in a top two, uh, is not just from zero to one, right? Because it's a 32-bit float texture. Um, in this case, just for R and G, that means that the values can take on really any number, um, any real number. We can see here that those values are going, I mean, they were up at 20, now they're, who knows? And this is just looking at the average, by the way, not even the max, which we can see is now in the hundreds. And that's why we're getting these crazy, um, crazy patterns. So you could potentially use something like this chop two and maybe an analyze and a min and a max. And then you could do like a math and rearrange each of these channels uh, based on uh, these values. This I find generally is pretty glitchy and kind of like Yeah, you can see it's kind of glitching and just like not looking that great. And that's because we're using these summary operations. And since our simulation is changing all the time, there can be some disjoint movements. Um, so I don't really like this. It never really does what I want it to. What I do instead is use a GLSL top. Boom. And really, really simple. We can just use the inbuilt normalize function. Uh, which I'm sure some people have seen me use in the past. And we can just wrap this input in our normalize function, just like that. And boom, if I analyze again and take a look at the values, we can see that our maximum is now just under one and our minimum is just down to negative one which is perfect um, and now our displace weight as we go up is behaving a little bit more proportionately as we would expect and that's really handy So that's trick one. I use it with my fluid simulation all the time. I also use it with 
uh, a number of other simulations and you can even use it if you're rendering something like particle instancing uh, and have maybe like additive blending and so you have rendered values that are not just in the range zero to one um, you can use normalize to actually recover some information from that render uh, and bring back some depth to your image so can take a look at that as well. That's use case one for a very quick GLSL. And then the other is for positioning points in instancing. So if I just have a rectangle and make it really tiny and then I'm not even going to do the render setup I'm just going to do a quick instance translate with R and G and obviously all of our stuff is just going to be in the middle for now, because all of our values are the same. Um, but commonly, what we're going to want to do is create a grid that corresponds to the pixels in our UV. So we have like a square of instances. Um, you might want to use this to spawn pixels or particles or something else. Uh, a common approach that I'll see people do is use tops and do something like a ramp and then make it red and then make like a vertical ramp and make that uh, green with a channel mix and I'm not sure why that's not working actually um, and make it green um, and then use a comp to put these guys together and add them something like this. You can do that. It's a couple clicks. I don't like that many clicks. What I prefer is to use this GLSL and simply do v uv dot st comma zero comma one. And this will then use our UV coordinates to colorize the pixels, giving us a nice smooth gradient from zero, zero to one, one. And we can use that to then initialize our particles, place our instances, whatever. Uh, I guess maybe we need a camera to be able to see. And There, especially if I make this a little bit larger with the math, we can start to see here that our instances are nicely arranged on a grid. And it was really easy to do that with VUV.ST. So I'm going to stop there for this one, like I said, super quick, um, but hopefully helpful. Uh, these are both tricks that I use all the time. So in closing, uh, I just want to say thank you to everyone supporting me on Patreon. Uh, it really is inspiring and just awesome that people are enjoying uh, the tutorials that I'm making and I love that people are able to use them to create their own super cool projects. I love what I'm seeing on Instagram. So keep showing me. It's awesome. And I will catch everyone next time.